Hey there, I'm Kristen. Today I'm gonna show you how to make your own tempera paint, also known as egg tempera. Tempera paint was the primary medium used in the early Renaissance, though it does date back to the Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. It is created by mixing finely ground pigment with the egg yolk, which is then diluted with water and applied in thin coats to produce vibrant, matte, and long-lasting colors. However, it was quite difficult to work with. It dried very quickly, which made it hard to blend layers together well. Oil painting started becoming popular in the 15th century, first in the Netherlands, and then Italy, and then throughout Europe. Uh, during this time, it was sometimes mixed with tempera paint to slow tempera's drying time. So one artwork that really highlights the potential for tempera paint is Idealized Portrait of a Lady by Sandro Botticelli from 1480. According to the Stasel Museum in Frankfurt, where the painting currently resides, this was a commissioned portrait by one of the Medici's of his mistress, Simonetta Vespucci. You can see here Botticelli's mastery of this medium. He layered it exceptionally to create soft skin tones with hints of pink at her cheeks and lips to show her beauty, as well as elegant flowing hair, pearls, and braiding that move your eye through the piece. Even the folds of her dress are shown in lifelike detail with light and shadow creating the illusion of volume. One of the most famous paintings of Leonardo da Vinci, The Last Supper, uses a mix of tempera and oil paint to get the best of both mediums. This allowed da Vinci time to finesse details as seen in the artist's rendition of how the painting likely looked in its prime. However, this mixture has proved to be disastrous to the painting's preservation. Over time, the details of the piece faded, and now even with restoration efforts, the famous painting is ill-preserved. Now that you know a bit more about the history of tempera paint, let's get you started on making your own. So these are the materials that I'm going to be using. I have my egg right here, I have my two bowls, this one I'm going to use for the egg white and this one for the egg yolk, and then I have a set of paint brushes, a scrapey tool from my ceramics kit, a little palette here to mix colors in, and then a cheap eyeshadow palette from the dollar store. First we're going to crack open our egg and we're going to let the egg white fall into our first bowl. That way we can separate out our egg yolk and once we've done that we're going to squeeze it open and let all the juices flow into there and we're ready to move on. Now we're ready to move on to our eyeshadow palette. So we'll use our scraping tool to get each section out into our paint palette. That way we have enough room to add the egg yolk to each section. Once your pigments are all emptied into your new palette, you can start adding in the egg yolk. So you want to add bit by bit, just a little at a time, until you get to a gravy-like consistency. And you'll see I'm using different paint brushes for each color here. You're welcome to just wash them off in between, or to use popsicle sticks or whatever other type of stirring medium you'd like. And just keep doing that until each color is fully mixed. I used one full egg yolk for all of these colors, and I'd actually recommend diluting this with a little bit of water as well. Here's my sketch of this apple that I found in our garden, and I had actually sketched this out right after I made the paint, so by the time that I got to painting it was a bit dry already, and as I kept painting it actually kept getting drier. So I'd suggest having your sketch ready, having your idea ready to go, and then creating your paint so that way you can work really quickly with it. Otherwise it's going to be a bit more difficult to work with. Uh, so I started with the light colors and then went to adding the darks later. And then I actually blended out the background after this. Big reveal! This is my finished product. It is quite reminiscent of finger painting because it ended up being that way toward the end. I ended up having to smudge along here. And it turned out that the smudging technique actually worked pretty well to add lighter tones. Uh, but you can see in here it's quite chunky and crunchy uh, because the paint was drying so quickly and because I wasn't really prepared to paint right away. Uh, it didn't work out too well. It was a bit stiffer than I would have wanted to be painting with. Uh, overall, this being the only medium that was really available, tempera, that would have been really rough. Uh, so the Renaissance era, definitely. Uh, the great painters, I'm quite impressed by them, and I do not envy the fact that they would have to pretty much create their own paint and then 
uh, just make their own art through this. The sun just came out a little bit so you can see the shine on it, so that's pretty fun. Uh, so if I did get a chance to, I think it'd be really fun to do this again, but maybe be better prepared next time. <laughs> So that way I can just get straight to it and actually use it more as a paint rather than like, feels almost like a crayon at this point. Uh Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about tempera paint in the Renaissance era and I hope you had a lot of fun.